Hello everyone, it's Dr. Durst with Revitalize MD, and today we're going to talk about peptides and peptide reconstitution. So a lot of my patients are on peptides, a lot of the patients at RMD are on peptides because we think they're amazing. They treat lots of different conditions and basically give the body back what it needs that isn't optimal any longer. So. We're going to talk about them and how they come and what we do so that we can actually use them and inject them. So peptides are amino acid sequences. So they're proteins that are going to act like neurotransmitters or hormones in the body. And basically we're using them for different conditions. We have peptides for tanning, melanotan. We have the one I have today is BPC-157. And that is a body protective compound that's used for repair. And so basically, we also have growth hormone peptides such as CJC-1295 or epimorelin is usually paired with it, tessamorelin is another one. We have inflammatory peptides, autoimmune peptides, peptides that help with sleep, all kinds of good things. What the purpose of this video is, again, you're going to get this peptide and it's going to be a powder and we want to make that a liquid so we can inject. Most peptides are liquids. You have to get them as a prescription through a doctor, highly recommended that you do not buy them on the in internet. You are injecting these into your body. So you wanna know the purity of that. You wanna know you're not injecting other substances at the same time, or just making sure you're getting what you're actually ordering. So make sure that's the case. Always get a prescription from a doctor that knows how to prescribe peptides. So basically it's gonna come from the pharmacy. Ours comes from a pharmacy in a bag like this. And it's gonna come with an instruction sheet and there's also gonna be instructions on the vials. This one is BPC-157 and it's gonna come with instructions. This one says reconstitute. Reconstitute means that you're going to make it from a powder to a liquid so you can inject. It will give you instructions on it. This one will say, for instance, with BPC-157, it, it depends on the peptide. It depends on the milligram amount in the vial so every pharmacy is different and every pharmacy is going to reconstitute sometimes with different volumes and if it comes with a powder that's that's measured in milligrams for instance and it tells you to reconstitute with a volume when you get a milligram per volume or a milligram per ml that's going to be a concentration the amount you're putting in to reconstitute it and the concentration and therefore dosing is different depending on the pharmacy and the provider. So you definitely don't want to take this video as an example of how you should reconstitute your peptide. You want to follow the instructions on the vial that is provided by the pharmacy after it was prescribed by your doctor. This is BPC-157. It's going to come in this bag with this instruction um, sheet on it and then also it's going to come with the instructions like I said on the vial and it'll say refrigerate after reconstitution and it'll tell you how to dilute it so basically this is the vial BPC 157 and ours has 15 milligrams just to make sure that you understood what I was saying I said it kind of fast but basically it comes in a powder so you can see that's a powder so we want to make that so that we can inject it. So we want to change it from a powder to a liquid because we can't inject a powder. We need to inject a liquid. So it'll come with alcohol swabs. It'll come with a syringe with a needle on it and a reconstitution solution, bacteriostatic water is what we use to reconstitute our peptides. And then your um, supplies from the pharmacy you know, again, this bag with the peptides with everything you need to reconstitute and then supplies for injection. This is a 100 unit um, insulin syringe. It may be a 50 unit insulin syringe or it can be a 30 unit insulin syringe. And again, this is hard to figure out on your own. Our office will always walk you through this and definitely the first time if we need to. So if we need to walk through it the first time in the office and then you can get it shipped to you and do it at home then at least we wanna make sure you understand it right, you're reconstituting it right, you're getting the right dose when you're injecting. You're gonna decap it, so take the cap off, and then you're gonna take the cap off the bacteriostatic water, all right? And then you're going to, now this is already sterile, both of them, so you don't necessarily need to do this, but get used to always wiping the top of 
a vial so that you just are used to it. You're always doing that to make sure it's clean before you're injecting. You're then going to take the syringe. And again, this is a bigger syringe so that um, you can draw up what you need to out of the bacteriostatic water. So this is a 10 ml, ml and cc are the same. And again, we're reconstituting per the vial, 7.5 mls or cc's. Just remember mls and cc's are the same thing. If you take and you draw up like 0.5 or 7.5 of air, then you can push it actually into, sorry, keep the needle on, don't take the needle off of it. Then you can push that into the bacteriostatic water. And then it just makes it easier. You don't have to do that, but if you're pushing water in, then it just comes out easier. And again, you'll get bubbles. You can get rid of those at the end and you want to take it back to, again, I always take it a little beyond, but I'm going to need seven and a half. So again, it's right between the seven and eight when we're going to end. So I always pull back more than that so that I can get the bubbles at the top out of it. And, and then I just go back and push to seven and a half. And when I'm there, I am giving myself a little bit of pressure as I bring the, the needle out just so it doesn't splash everywhere. Um, and then, so I might be a little bit over it. So then I'm gonna go ahead and push up to seven and a half. Again, just make sure you're not on furniture that's gonna get ruined, but it's bacteriostatic water. So it's just water, it's not gonna hurt anyone. So now we're gonna reconstitute. So we have seven and a half cc's of bacteriostatic water in our syringe. So now what we're gonna do is take the vial of peptide. You can see the powder. I hold back on the plunger. So here's the plunger. I keep my thumb there so that the fluid goes slowly in because this is gonna vacuum and suck that bacteriostatic water in. So you put it in the center of that cap capper, stopper, and then I just kind of hold on to the bottom of the, or to the plunger, and I'm just going to let it slowly go in. Let me see if I can actually get a, where you can see it just slowly going in. And again, peptides are very fragile, so we don't want to slam the, um, the, the water in. We don't want that to happen. And we also don't want to go and shaking it very roughly. We want to now mix it though, right? We want it all mixed. I always keep my things I'm done with on one side. So I just go ahead and take this file, the powder was all at the bottom, and just kind of roll it back and forth between my, my hands. So that now you'll be able to see. And then again, you can look at the bottom. There's no powder left and it's all liquid now. So now we have seven and a half cc's in 15 milligrams. So you have two milligrams per cc. That is not necessary for you to know because the bottom line is, again, always go back to what's prescribed by your doctor, by your pharmacy, and what's on here. It'll tell you the amount of milligrams in the vial. It'll tell you what to reconstitute it with. If you get those two right, then you can inject what they say, 25 units, and you're all good, all right? So now you've done those two things. You took the vial with the 15 milligrams, you put the seven and a half in, and now it's saying to inject with 25 units. So this is where it's important because you have to know these are all insulin syringes. So when you're talking about insulin syringes, you're talking about units and mLs. And again, mLs are like cc's. So this is a one mL and it's got 100 units in it. There's the one ml, and again, it shows you right on there, a cc is equivalent to an ml, and this is one ml or one cc. That has 100 units in it. So say we're only injecting 25 units, but say it was gonna say inject 90 units, then you would need this one because the other one wouldn't have 90 units in it. But just know which one you get and mLs are not the same as units. So basically if it's saying to inject 25, you wanna make sure that um, you do 25 units. This is a 50 unit. And again, that's a 0.5 or a half cc or ml. 
and that has 50 units in. And this one has 30 units in it, and that's 0.3. So it's all the same. The lines are going to be a little further apart with this and a little closer together with the 1 ml. That's really the big difference. Take the capper off, prime the syringe. So just move that plunger back and forth so that it moves easily. Then you take the cap off. Again, you've already wiped down the top of this. And then again, don't be too rough with the vial. And what we want for this one is 25 units. So you can see 25 on there. So I'm going to go ahead, you don't need to put air in this one, you can, but you're just using a small amount. So then just put it, the needle in the middle of the cap, and then you're just going to pull back. And sometimes it'll get a little finicky just where the placement is. Just wait until you see some, some of the fluid in the syringe and you can see where it's actually, and again, I always will go a little beyond so that the air bubbles collect at the top if you see any and there again a small air bubble is not going to hurt you but if you can get those out that would be ideal and so you just you know tap and they go to the top and then basically or I still see one in the middle so I'm just gonna press back up till that's gone and it might be all the way in. that's okay and then just take it back out and go a little slower next time because that sometimes will be what happens. And then the other option for getting those air bubbles out if you don't get them out right then, I'll show you in just one moment. Don't overthink it. Don't worry. One little air bubble in an insulin syringe is not going to hurt you when you're going into a subcutaneous tissue. You get them all out and if you didn't Push a little bit beyond, take 26 units versus 25, shake it like this once you get it out and just, you know, um, squirt a little bit out of the top. So now you have 25 units in there. What you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to pinch a little fat in the subcutaneous area. And that can be on your leg. It could be on your belly. You just find that and basically you squeeze it and then look how small that needle is. You're just going to put it in the subcutaneous. We all have subcutaneous fat somewhere find some and put it in there and then that's it you're done recap it and you are all done with that I'm actually going to take this it's one of my favorite peptides so I'm not going to squirt it back in the bottle but I'm also not going to lift up my shirt and do the injection now so you just got to know and trust me I do want to point out just one thing again so this is 25 units and if it was a hundred unit one you'd still be at 25 units but it's just this small on this one because it's a whole one cc versus a third of a cc and this one you'd be at 25 units so if it says 25 units you're just doing 25 i don't want to confuse you but people do get confused just knowing that hey i got this syringe it has 100 this one has 30 this one has 50 they're asking you to do 25 so just find the 25 on those syringes and usually there's a reason why you're getting a specific one the big thing is is these are all very uh, um fragile so you want to make sure that you refrigerate it and it'll say that on here you know it will tell you to refrigerate we send you out with an entire instruction sheet that says refrigerate after reconstitution and so you're going to put this in the refrigerator and you're going to go ahead and draw up 25 units and this is each day you'll have specific instructions on there so if it says you know 25 units twice a day then you're going to take one of these twice a day so whatever it says but basically make sure this is in the refrigerator make sure you have all your supplies for injection and again if you're traveling with it try to put it in a you know small cooler that you can take with you you know just so that you keep it cool if it happens to be out for a little while that's okay you just want to get it refrigerated again as soon as possible if you have questions you can always reach out to your doctor to get some answers for that and definitely if you're a patient of ours you just reach out to our office and we'll answer things because we're here for that reason we're prescribing these we want to walk you through every step of the way if you have any questions you just let us know my entire office staff and myself are here just to answer questions and again this basically gives your body back what it needs to either repair or to optimize growth hormone or to tan or whatever it is, decrease inflammation, autoimmune problems, there's peptides for everything. So again, any questions, concerns, anything you want to hear more about, 
please let us know and like, subscribe, and share with some friends. We're here to revitalize your look, your health, and your sex life. Thank you.